Uh, totally by chance, I was listening to Mark Moran's uh, podcast with uh, Tony Shalhoub this morning, and he mentioned your name, and here you are. Oh, Tony did? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a he friend was, and a, a brilliant actor. He was excellent yeah. in The Siege. He was in The Siege, and yeah. he's supposed to have a three-week uh, window between a film in L.A. and starting The Siege, yeah. and then they ran three weeks over, and so he had to take the red eye, and his first scene is his biggest scene in the film. That is a great story, and, a, and such a mark on him. It's the scene when they are at the camp, when they've, when they've quarantined prisoners in the, that stadium, yeah. and he has to just step in and break down, and, and I mean, he's just a money player. He's the person you want up at bat when they're men on base. But again, it gets to the idea that you get to work with, and you choose, Yes. people like that. Now, Tony Shalhoub, when The Siege was made, was sort of... He's a theater actor at that, yeah. that point, mostly. He's blown up. His second film. Yeah. Right, yeah. He's, he's really blown up. Yeah. And you, you bet right. Yeah. Um, there's a great story, and it's not about Tony, it's about Robert Duvall, who was a, uh, a Dustin Hoffman's roommate, and they used to do plays, and, Dust, and Tony, uh, Robert Duvall would be offstage listening to a, to a transistor radio because he's a major football fan, and he'd be screaming, going, yeah, go, 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 and it'd be his cue, and he'd walk on stage and burst into tears. <laughs> And they it was just like they all said he was the most brilliant actor that ever. He was ever probably seen. listening to the Jets game. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> Who among us has not burst into tears listening to the Jets game? Go ahead. Thank you for thirty something. That sure. was also the story of my life. Okay. I was I was Ellen. Um, <laughs> she was elected I'm official. I'm always intrigued right. by at the end of that scene that the name of your production company was yes. a. To Bedford Falls. To Bedford yeah. Falls. Yeah. Do you have a tie-in? Is there a story? The tie-in, yes, that? there is a story. Uh, the tie-in is that um, my partner, Marshall Herskovitz, with whom I've worked all these years, um, uh, when he and I were in film school, we one of the first uh, dates that we had together was to go to a revival house and see a screening of my so-called life. Oh, uh, a screening of It's a Wonderful, it's life. wonderful life. Right. And... I it, like the idea of It's a Wonderful My So-Called yes, Life. Yes, right, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been too. a good episode, yeah. right? Think about that. Um, but... Uh, it, we ended up talking all night about the movie, and, and even at that moment we were 22, and said, well, if ever we ever had a production company, we should call it Bedford Falls. And then, and then you did. so long thereafter, maybe six or seven years after, that's what happened. Any chance for sixty something? Well, As you know, look, if, 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 if they can, if they can bring back I'm Will and Grace, there. and they can bring back Murphy Brown. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, you know, we still have. I mean, my kids are thirty something now, and so are Marshall's kids. And their lives are totally different than ours were then. Right. And that might be a source of talking about just how embarrassed they are by their parents trying to stay young. Uh, we never say never. You know, if you bring that show back, this yeah. is my one thing. You've got to bring Gary back from the dead. <laughs> because, because I will tell you, all these years later, I'm still pissed. <laughs> I was caught flat-footed. Maybe he had a twin. I was like, caught flat-footed. Like, like, that, now, now, now you're talking. Undiscovered twin. Work with that. Keep mm -hmm. going, sir. Um, so you haven't missed much with the stories that you choose, uh, and I'm, I'm a screenwriter, mm -hmm. so um, I love taking on historical events. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious, you touched on it in the beginning, what dramatic elements uh, do you really look for? Do you, do you have, I don't want to say a checklist, but I mean, what are you vetting these, it's these good, stories It's a good for? question. Obviously, I mean, there's, you know, there's a, a three-act structure in a, in, a, in, a, in a story, but I would say it would be very nice, it is always nice if you can find the conflictual things that are also inhabited within the characters. In other words, so that, uh, let me give you one example. Think of Blood Diamond. These three people are brought together. One of them, who is a native of, of Africa, well, there are two natives of Africa. One, the white man is, is from um, Zimbabwe. The black man is from uh, South Africa. Uh, actually, from Sierra Leone, sorry. And the, the, the woman is from the United States. But the, the, the black man wants his son the uh, white man wants the diamond, and the white woman wants a story. And all three of those things are in conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. And so that right. it's not just about these people and their personal issues, but their personal issues are also reflected in the larger canvas of what's happening there, about child soldiers, about the exploitation of resources in the third world, about uh, the, the, the attempt to, to exploit that journalistically, and the responsibilities of that. So they begin to, to swirl around together. Um, you know, glory would be another, uh, for instance, which is to say, you know, the abolitionists at the time believed that they understood the nature of what they were um, trying to create with um, emancipation, but they didn't actually understand what it meant to the black men of the regiment. And yet, so that came into conflict, and yet they had, they had to discover commonality of a goal. 
So it's not just about saying this is a story about a, someone who's having trouble with their brother and that's unrelated to the story of the larger idea. It's to try to find a way to, to, to integrate them. Great. Excellent. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, I went to New Trier High School. All right. My, my dad actually went there too and played soccer with you. Oh, wait. Who's your dad? Uh, Michael Harada. Oh, my God. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. How cool. Um, so Say I, hi to your dad. I will. So I was wondering, um, I know you mentioned in high school is when you, when you kind of got the bug to do this. I yeah. was wondering specifically, like, what plays and what exactly, what clubs or well, what? Well, Nutria High School, you which you went to and mm -hmm. I went to, it had a suburban Chicago. Yeah, yeah, it had an extraordinary um, arts department and theater arts, performing arts, uh, uh, plastic arts, music, all of it. And we were, uh, something I remember very vividly, we had great drama teachers, first of all, but also this, it, this was in the late 1960s and um, they were affiliated with Northwestern and a lot of the um, graduate students at Northwestern were trying to hold on to their deferments, and so they would come student teach. Oh. And, so, oh, right? and so we had a couple of student teachers who went on to form major theater companies in New York, and there I was at 15, 16 years old and being exposed to these people who would become leading lights of the theater. And they, they weren't only much older than us, they were maybe 22 or 23, mm -hmm. and it was uh, just an amazing opportunity. And, and they had a physical plant that allowed us to do these amazing things too. So, so you spent time in Evanston on that campus as a consequence of uh, that? This was actually, this wasn't Evanston, this is Winnetka actually. Oh, up, yeah. up in Winnetka. Yeah. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sure. Wow. That's it. Steve, are we good? All right. Please give Ed Zwick a big hand. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank all of you. Thank you very much. We will